Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a roof tile material in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be creating a roof tile material that I'll be applying to the surface on this model. Currently this model is just a simple white texture that I've added over and I've set up a sunlight and a clipping plane so we're creating a semi-section that's sort of cutting through this model. Now I'm going to be zooming in to here and we're going to be applying our roof material onto this red area here. Now to begin with, what I'm going to do is just minimize my frame buffer and open up the V-Ray Asset Editor to create a new material. You can find that either in the V-Ray toolbar here, or we can go to V-Ray and click on the Asset Editor. In here I'm going to make a brand new material by clicking on the plus tab in the corner, going to Material and creating a generic material. And we're going to name this Roof Tile. Now in order to find some material textures and maps that we're going to use for this material, I'm going to get these from a place called Polyhaven. Polyhaven has a great library of different materials and textures and I'm going to be using this roof tile texture here to apply to the model. All of these are free and you can have a look in their library to find specific roof tiles you might want or other textures you may need and I'll put a link in the description to the particular texture that I'm using for this tutorial. Once you've downloaded this, we're then going to load these maps into our material file. To do that, I'm going to start with the diffuse, which is essentially the color of the material. We're going to click on the texture map slot next to that color option, click on bitmap to load in an image, and then select the color image here to load into our file. And there we can see it previewed, and if we hit the back button, it's then applied to that material. From there, I'm going to select my roof here, which is this red plane, right click on my material and click apply to selection. If we then open up the frame buffer and render this out, you can then see that that material has been applied to the surface of that texture, like so. At the moment this will be quite flat and if we just roll around it just to have a look at it, you'll see that it's essentially just applied it on as a wallpaper on that surface. Now it may be that your material is either too big or too small and you actually need to properly size that texture in order to map it correctly to the object. To do this we need to open up the material texture mapping options. Now we can find these if I just move my frame buffer to the side here in the properties menu. If you select the object you want to texture map you can go into your properties menu here click on the texture mapping option which is this little kind of roll of checkerboard here and we can apply a texture map. Now for this, I'm just gonna use the box mapping. And usually to start with, I draw out a box that's a kind of random size, but the size I think my texture is gonna be. It will give you a preview of that texture. And essentially this box represents one face of your texture map that's then gonna be repeated over the surface. Once you're happy with that, you can hit enter and you'll see that then the texture map updates in your preview. And in my case, it's a bit smaller here as well. Now, if you want to then change the size or rotate that, we can then, with that object still selected, go into the texture mapping options and resize it just from these X, Y, and Z components here. I'm gonna make mine slightly bigger, so we're gonna make it around 2,500, and I'm working in millimeters, which is what that size corresponds to. I've also noticed that this is now the wrong way around. It's kind of 90 degrees turned, so I actually want to rotate that, and we can do that using these rotation panels and I'm just going to turn it in the z-axis by 90 there. If you're having trouble selecting that number, you can always type it in as well. So once you've got your texture at the right size and the right orientation, we're then going to start to add some other attributes to make this look a little bit more like the roof tiles we saw in the preview. We want these to be bumpy and have actual geometry that those kind of curved roof tiles looks like. Now in order to create that, we're going to be using a displacement map and I'm going to use this render and leave it running on the side so we can see the changes as we add this in. Now to add a displacement to this particular object, we're going to open up the asset editor again, go to the create tab and go to geometries and create a displacement geometry. Under here, we're going to right click and apply it to the selection to load that in. And then under the mode, we're going to switch the normal displacement to a 2D displacement. This is just a single surface that I'm applying this to, so we can use this 2D displacement option, and you'll also find that's a lot quicker than the normal displacement option there. Now, also under that, we're going to click on the map option here, load up another bitmap, 
and find the displacement here. Now you'll notice this is one with the DISP tag on it and it will be a black and white texture with the kind of black areas corresponding to the lowest point of the image and the white areas corresponding to the highest point. If we click that and hit open there, it will load that in and you might not notice any difference at first. But if we go back and change this amount to something slightly higher, in this case I'm going to change mine to a 40, you'll now notice we're getting that kind of bumpy texture coming on. And I'm going to zoom in slightly so we can see it in a bit more detail. And here you can see that that sort of bumpiness, that kind of curviness of those tiles is now being applied. And then we look at it at the top here on this corner, and you can start to see it in a little bit more detail. Now, if you want that to be more pronounced or a little bit stronger in the texture, you can always up that amount. I'm going to up mine to an 80 instead and there you can see it's working even more now so you just need to play around with those parameters until it's looking right for your particular model this number is linked to your units so for me i'm in millimeters so this will correspond to a kind of push up of 80 millimeters if you're in meters obviously that needs to be a lot less otherwise you're going to have very kind of pushed up models and it will look quite strange in that case also, if you find that the resolution isn't quite high enough, you can always up this value. It will take slightly longer to render, but your displacement will be slightly sharper and a little bit more accurate. Once you're happy with that, we've then got our finished displacement. And if we sort of zoom out, we can see that over the course of the whole model. So that was just a very quick video tutorial on how to create a roof tile texture in V-Ray for Rhino. I hope you found this video useful and if you want to watch any other videos of creating materials and textures in Rhino then please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.